Let's take a look at the crop planner here, which is the sheet within this um, uh, spreadsheet that you're going to spend the most time. Now I'll just warn you now, this is probably going to be the biggest spreadsheet you have ever seen in your life. So um, uh, I've tried to compact it as much as possible, so you're only taking a look at what you need to see. Uh, if you're not into spreadsheets, this might be a bit intimidating. And if you are into spreadsheets, this might be a little bit fun. But hopefully this tutorial makes it a lot more clear and makes it easy to navigate. So the crop planner is set up for two harvests a week. We've set our harvests for Tuesday and Friday, but if you want to do a Monday, Thursday harvest, that's totally fine. Uh, it's super adaptable, so, so it doesn't matter at all. Uh, it's broken down uh, on a week by week basis, so week one, week two, week three, and these are all collapsed right now, and I'll, I'll expand them as we need to look into them. So this is the, the basic view showing you these are going to be all your uh, all your harvest dates basically, and then this is the week number within the year. So these are your Tuesdays, these are your Fridays. All you need to do in here is enter the first date. So if I change this to January 7th, all the other dates are going to change. So you only need to check that one date. Our Tuesdays and Fridays are always our harvest days. We're not going to randomly change our harvest day. And if you randomly change your harvest day, stop. That's uh, generally not a good idea. Uh, and even if you do, it's still going to be based on production on one of these harvest days. So um, try not to do that. Uh, lots of notes in here. There's about 40, yeah, there's 40 comments in here. So you're going to come across a lot of them. Hopefully they help guide you through and remind you what things are for. And then up here is a little summary. So this kind of summarizes how everything works out. So we've got our Tuesday and Friday revenue here. You can see we're doing a lot more Friday revenue than Tuesday revenue, probably because of weekend markets. Here's our average weekly sales. And these are our total projected sales. And so we built this, uh, these projections based on our goals. Our goal was to do $2,500 of sales a week and to do $125,000 uh, 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 in sales a year. Uh, now this actually comes out to 8,200 trays, so it ends up being more than we projected, uh, but so is this number. And that seems like a little bit more than I thought it would be, but I'm sure it's all fine. Uh, and this breaks down into large and small uh, packaging. We don't, I don't have any medium packaging on here, uh, so I didn't put the medium one in. Um, and it's too late to put it in, I think, so I could squeeze it in there somewhere. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the Tuesday harvest here so we can see how things are laid out. And then I'm going to open it here as well for the first week. So you can see how it is here in this section, basically here, which I'm going to highlight. Oops, went a little too far there. So this is the stuff we're working with right in here. The comments get to be a little annoying, but that's just how it is. So basically to row AA here, so this is this is basically all our first one week here. So we've got all 11 crops here. Here's the crops we entered into into the into our system earlier. And here's our um, here is our uh, farmers markets and our, uh, our our clients here as well. The, they're all in here, but I can remove any one of these uh, or just add any one of them by a drop down menu. So let's start at the top here. So a little bit of duplicate data because the top rows are frozen. Uh, I project these uh, these uh, back up to here. That way, when you scroll up, you can still see what crop you're working with. That makes it a little simpler. So because this is our harvest date, and in crop planning, we're always working from the future and working backwards. Uh, we're generating two things here. We're generating a soaking date and a sowing date. And for many crops, that is the same same day. You soak and sow a crop on the same day, but for some crops, you might soak them overnight. So you soak on a Sunday to sow on a Monday. So this top row here is our is our soaking date. So that's the date we want to soak seed, um, whether we're sowing it on that date or not. It doesn't matter. The next row here is our um, is our the days number of soaking days. So most of these you can see are zero, but the P has one soaking day, which means we soak it overnight and sow it the next day. So here when it comes to the sowing day, you can see that the P is soaked on the Sunday, but then sowed on the Monday. The radish is soaked on the Tuesday and sowed on the Tuesday, as is the as sunflower and everything else. So this may not be common. If you don't do any overnight soaks, you'll never use this. You'll never use this. It'll just auto-generate from... Um, uh, your production days, 
Uh, and so, yeah, you won't have to worry about that. You just need to worry about this. When do I sow a crop to harvest it on January 8th? This is the goal of this spreadsheet, to tell you when to plant, how much to plant of each crop. So this is our crop that auto feeds, as I said before. And then here is the uh, our days to maturity. So this basically means how long does the crop take to grow, because that determines as well when it's going to be sowed. So here our sunflower is eight, our pea is nine, uh, radish is seven. That's why they, these things have different sowing days. Um, and these, once these are in, once all this information is in, it actually just copies to the next week automatically. In fact, most of the data you input is going to copy to the next week automatically. That means you don't need to enter it multiple times, uh, and it generally makes things simpler. It might be confusing at first, but I assure you it's a, a, a way to reduce mistakes. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. This is basically your sowing and your soaking data, your, your pre-populated uh, pre populated crops, and then this value here is your days to maturity, which, like I said, it, it copies into future, it copies into the next week, which means if I change my sunflower uh, here, I change it to nine, it's not going to change it in the week before, but it is going to change it in the week after. And the reason we do that is because as the seasons change, we may want to shorten or lengthen our, our days to maturity. So we do that and it just changes them from there on out. And then we want to change it back. We change it again and it changes it from there on out. So it's a very simple system in terms of that. And because you will inter interact with this spreadsheet a lot, you'll probably um, get into a very good rhythm with that. Okay, now let's go to the side here. There's four components here. Our delivery routes, our vendors, our price, and then our sizing. Now, even though we did put our prices in, I actually set it up so you have to enter your price here. Uh, and so we, we had our $5 price and our $18 price and our $4 price, which could auto feed. Uh, the thing is, we, we're, we're basically just doing projections here based on small, medium, or large sizes. And because those sizes could have different prices, it, I, it's better to leave it blank and make you fill in a price than uh, put in a price and have the wrong price. Now you do not use the spreadsheet for generating invoices, uh, but it is used for your financial projection, so we want this to be accurate. So we put this price in, um, and once again, this this will um, feed everything pre in the future. So this, as you can see, is also frozen cells. So this is the stuff you're going to be looking at all the time, along with this stuff up here. Okay, so we have four components here, our delivery routes, our vendor, our price, and our size. The delivery routes are good for just uh, have, uh, more for when it comes to deliveries and sorting your orders. Um, not so much so important in the planning, it's more for afterwards. Restaurants and the markets are all on the drop down menu, so you can either just pick one or you can start typing and it will autofill. The price you put in, and you can see we have some of these at 18, and we have some of our restaurants at $16. And the example is here, maybe this restaurant's taking four sunflower. They've been a customer for a long time. And so as the pricing has gone up for some customers, we've kept them at a lower price. Or usually they buy a higher volume, so we give them a bigger price. So this is why the pricing is very flexible. You can see down here, we have some of these different prices here for grocers and pickups as well. So pricing doesn't change our projections. It just changes our, our finances. It doesn't change how much we sow. It just changes how much we revenue we generate. What is important here is putting in the size. So here you can do a, a small, medium, large, or a tray, and the spreadsheet will take care of everything. So when I put in large here, it copies this here, and this is just a, for, for math later. So when I look at this, it's a large. If I change it to a medium, it takes a second here. Everything else will change within there as well, and, and onwards. So I'm just going to change that back. So that's important because too large, uh, a large is 450 grams for sunflower. Uh, that's much more volume than uh, too small or too medium, which means we're going to need to sow more. So basically, the small, the large, and the medium, and the trays that are here are telling the spreadsheet how much seed we're going to need to sow to fulfill these orders. Hopefully, this is making sense. It's fairly simple. So these are just basic numbers, but let's just say uh, I'm doing the Trout Lake Market. And I'm going to do 20 small sunflower, I'm going to do 20 small pea, and I'm going to do 10 small radish, and I'm going to do 10 small arugula. 
So you can see here what it does, those numbers actually add up the value on the end. So that gets added up there, and then down below is where the, uh, where the calculation takes place of all the sunflower and all the pea and all the radish. And then you can see for each week it summarizes your sales here. So our Tuesday sales are $1,000, our Fridays are about $1,600. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to delete these just to keep this spreadsheet consistent. I'm just going to keep this at one. Okay, and you can see once again, you can see all this information in here that I've talked about is in these comments. So there is a good reference there. So we've entered in all these orders, restaurant one and restaurant two, this is how much they want. Once again, these are copying into the subsequent weeks. The reason we do that is because a lot of your clients are going to give you repeat orders or standing orders. And so just have the order in there. And another reason is it's better to have an order in there that you don't actually make the sale for than have a sale and not have the crop for. So the risk here is you might over sow and over sowing is almost always better than under sowing. Under sowing means you're, and if you don't have enough harvest, means you're not going to get a sale. Over sowing means you need to try and find more sales to sell what you have left, or you're going to be eating a lot of your own product. Okay, so now we have all this information, these large and these small uh, crops. They're just large and small here right now. We've got all our numbers in here. You can see we've got eight small sunflower, oops, six small pea, six small radish going to this grocer. And these other ones actually don't have any sales. And so they don't actually even need to be in here. I can just delete those and all this. So when I delete something, I try to delete everything. So there's nothing there sort of uh, getting in the way. So I've got my sales in, I've got my arugula, stuff over there. Now I'm gonna scroll down. I've got a little bit more stuff here, just testing some things in here. I didn't have any prices. And then I've got my buffer. So the buffer here is what I can put in to just have a little bit extra. So if you're trying to grow your business, you generally actually want more product than you're going to sell because you're hoping to make more sales. More at the farmer's market, the grocer picks up a few more uh, packages, you bring on a new grocer or a new restaurant. You cannot do that if your product is already spoken for. You're sowing twice a week, so you're adjusting your numbers all the time, uh, but a little bit extra is always going to go a long way. And if you're if if you're if you're doing this really well, your 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 statistics will be quite accurate, and you'll find you've got what you need. And the bit extra, if you don't sell it, is probably about the amount you and your crew are going to eat anyway. So it works quite well that way. So as we go down here, it generates all this information. So in total, I'm going to have 17 small units, uh, one medium unit, 21 large units, and one tray. And that's just from these. Some of these are just from those ones I put at the bottom here. So back, we're back to this idea of the small unit equivalent. This gives me 97.6 small unit equivalents of sunflower. And you can see that's across the board for all these ones about how many they are. So that's almost 100 clamshells basically worth of sunflower. Our projected yield is, uh, is a five small units per, per tray. And so based on these numbers, I'm going to need to sow 19 and a half trays. You're not going to sow a half tray, so it rounds it up to 20. So uh, 20 is in there. Our sowing rate is, is in there as well. And so this is already pre-fed. And then our production cost, this is based on uh, information that comes later in the spreadsheet. Uh, but because we're paying, we're doing 20 trays, we're paying for the seed there, we're paying for the labor there. This is just there for a quick reference. And your projected revenue for that is here as well. Now you can see some of these revenues come out below production cost. And this is a little complicated to explain, but basically the spreadsheet just averages your total labor, labor across all the trays that you produce. So a sunflower tray technically costs the same as a, as a pea tray, even though in reality that might be different because some are quicker to sow and some are quicker to harvest. That just gets a little too complicated. Um, okay, so here is, is a space now for um, your... Um, uh, lot numbers. And so seeds as you bring them in are all going to have a lot number on them. And this is a good reference uh, for you if you need to um, if you need to do a recall, uh, if you just want to know if you've got multiple lots and you want to know uh, you want one lot over another because they perform differently. This is a really good and really important record to have. And so you have it on a, on a week by week basis. So this again, it auto copies to the next week, uh, but you want to change it when you're changing your lot numbers. So just be mindful about that. 
because if you do need to go back to your records for something, then that's actually, that's going to help you uh, make sure you do that. Now, just a quick note here before I move on to the next section. While your actual trace to sow is calculated here, you can change this number. So you need to sow 20 trays and that has your buffer included in it. But if you decide to sow uh, 21 trays, then you just change that to 21. So this is important that you update this so you know what you actually have sowed. Now, once we've, uh, once we've sowed these 20 trays, so we've done all that work oops, to, to, just to find out we need to sow 20 trays. So that's always, it's like, I look at the spreadsheet, it says sow 20 trays today, simple as that. Now, once it comes to harvest time on, on January the 8th, the, 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 uh, the date copies down below here, we want to start inputting our data here because we want to make sure that what we're putting, uh, we're basically we want to A, track our production, and B, we want to make sure our model is holding true. And so what this is doing is making sure our, our average um, yield is, is um, is, is accurate. So let's just say we sowed 20 trays and we harvested 20 trays. And we harvested, uh, just taking a look here, we harvested 19 small units. Oh no, we'll just say 17. Just trying to refer to the numbers here. Uh, one medium and 21 large. So these are our, these are our projected numbers. So 17, one and 21. And then in terms of trays, Trays are actually, um, it's, it's kind of tricky with trays because if you're selling a tray, you don't know the weight of that tray. And so what I'll often do is, if, uh, is, is add the tray. If I know my average, I will just include it in the bulk. Uh, so the bulk, if, my, if I'm, my expected yield is you know, 650 grams per tray, um, I can just put uh, 650. So I'm going to put equal 650. Um, because I, I, we did all our, our, our small, medium, and large. We have our tray, which we'll put at 650, plus I had 400 extra grams. So, sorry, my caps lock was on there. Plus I had 400 extra grams. So this is my bulk weight. So basically I have, uh, I've done all this, and with my tray and my extra stuff, I've, I've harvested uh, an extra 1,050 grams. So my total harvest ends up being 103 small bag equivalents, and my target was 97. And you can see our expected yield was 5, but our actual yield was 5.16. So this is very, very close. This is perfect. It's actually exactly what we want. We projected 5 small unit equivalents per tray. We got 5.2, basically. Great. Now, if this is consistently higher, then we might want to shift our projections to 5.2. And, and you might say, well, I like having that little bit of extra, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but once again, you've got probably got 400 grams here that you're not selling. Um, and you've and this is memory. You've got your buffer in here as well. So it's just a matter of deciding what you want to do. There's different ways to do it. Um, my recommendation is always having more than you need. Uh, but once again, the buffer should be doing that. So. This, this is basically how the crop planner works. A little bit of information that shows up over here tells you the total number of trays you've sowed, reminds you of your capacity, and tells you you still have space left. And so this is a good thing to look at when you've done your projections because um, you might do a, you know, you might put a bunch of numbers in here and then be like, oh, actually, I need 104 trays to fulfill this order. So what are we going to do? Now, if you can produce 100 trays a week, or per harvest, you could probably find space for four more. Um, somehow it just happens, uh, but keep that in mind. So that's what each day looks like. Uh, you're going to do that. And so this is our Friday, same thing, Friday harvest. Works exactly like the Tuesday harvest. And so what I do is I sit down on Monday. And if I sit down on Monday, January 7th, for example, I'm not looking at this date. I'm looking at this date and the next date, right? Because you can see I have a bunch of stuff to do on January 7th and January 6th. The trick with crop planning is you have to look into the future decide to decide what you're going to do soon. And what you'll find is basically you can see every Monday is a big sowing day. Every Sunday I'm soaking pea, 
every Tuesday I'm sowing radish because there's, you know, there's different things. So you just get into a routine, you get a schedule, but it's the crop planner that sets your original schedule. Uh, in the beginning, this might seem like a lot to remember, but after you've done it for even three or four weeks, your Monday and your Tuesday and your Wednesday, every day is going to be kind of a set day unless you change the days to maturity for one of your crops. Then you just have to remember, oh, we were sowing sunflower on Monday, but now we've moved it to Sunday. So you just got to change your scheduling a bit to accommodate that. Another quick note about adding clients and uh, markets. You only need to add your clients and markets here to your Tuesday, and this automatically adds them to your Friday. So you can see these are all, all orange, which means do not change them. Even if you don't have, uh, you know, let's just put back Grocer 3 here. Maybe Grocer 3 doesn't have a Tuesday order. It might seem weird to put it there, but they do. Have, and, and that's actually, that's how it was. I, I deleted those ones up above, but they actually had orders in here that were in there previously. So uh, it, it seems a bit odd to do that, to not have them separately. But what we have found is we have a lot of standing orders and we have a lot of customers who take two, two deliveries a week. And so trying to remember to write them down twice, uh, this spreadsheet is just designed to duplicate information and project it into the future. So you only basically enter room uh, your clients on your Tuesday day. You can see there's room for lots of clients here. It automatically feeds your, your Friday. And you can even go through, and if you want to, uh, which I can't do and then duplicate, is you can go through and you can protect these sh cells. That way you can't change them accidentally and, and neither can anyone else. So I can do that, but as soon as I duplicate the spreadsheet to create a new version, uh, the protection doesn't stay on. So that's an overview of how you use the crop planner and what that looks like. I'm just going to collapse these here. You can see we changed some numbers in there and you can see our sales went went down from 129,000 to 125,000. That was just from taking these few little clients out here. So this is where we things really notice. Let's say we have this restaurant here at $18 and we just decide to give it to them for $16. That costs us money. So it's costing us $1,100 a year if we give that that um, uh, restaurant that, that, that was at $16 instead of $18. Same thing. If we're like, you know what? This is a fancy restaurant. They can afford it. We bump it up to 20. That's going to make us an extra $1,100 a year. Same amount of work, different price point. And this pricing is really important. Once you've done these projections, which are based on, one, what we wanted to do for our projected sales, but two, also what you think you can sell. Can you do four farmers market over the course of a year? Like these three here all take place in the summer. This is a winter market. Saturday, Thursday, Wednesday. Can you do that? If you can't, you need to change your market scheme so you can do it. Can you service 10 restaurants and three grocers? And potentially, like we had down here, some pickups. If you can't do that, then you need to adjust things. So this also gives you a sense of what are you going to need to do? You need to have 10 restaurants for clients to make this work. And then if the numbers aren't quite working out, you'd be like, okay, you know what? We cannot offer people a discount. They must take, we must sell everything at $18. So we'll see there's a little bit of delay as it does the calculations, um, but this will show up here. So we really need that. Uh, I'll just reduce those back. Um, oh, we'll keep them up, why not? It's hitting our target pretty good. So this is really important in terms of understanding how little changes make a big difference in your bottom line because those little changes have uh, repeat multiple times. And so this, this little change here repeats 49 more times after this week. Uh, so every week is the same. And you can see basically there's a formula in here that says basically just copy what was in the cell the week before. Now if I delete an order, if I delete this, I've deleted the order and I've also deleted the formula. And so this is something to watch out for because it can mess you up. If you find your things aren't um, uh, working and you're like, what's going on? You can kind of go through a, a row like this and sort of scan through and look for a, you can just see it. it's like, oh, missing one right there. I can copy this one from here with a control C, paste it there with a control V and everything's back to normal. You can see that one shows up again. So that could just be if you change orders multiple times. So what I might do within a week is just, yeah, if, if things aren't looking, I do. I'll go through, I'll scroll through and, and take a look at those. You can also show the formula. So if there's one missing, then, then you'll see that blank spot more easily. 
So if you've worked with spreadsheets a lot, this stuff will be more intuitive. It's easier to find. If you haven't worked with spreadsheets, if you make an error by uh, changing a cell you shouldn't have, then it's going to be very, very challenging. So just, just keep that in mind to don't change the orange cells. So I believe we've covered everything we need to in the crop planner here. Uh, just a little note at the bottom here, reminding us about our weekly revenue goals. And I think everything else is pretty straightforward. So uh, play around with that a little bit, and we'll now move on to uh, taking a look at our sales and projections based on the crop planner so we can start breaking stuff down by crops.